Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk to you about the gear I'm going to use for the Trans America bike ride, which if you saw my last video, you know I'll be doing August, September this year. I know I'm a, a little bit ahead of myself with this, but it's really useful because I can get feedback from you guys. People can tell me what I need to change if I need to change anything. Also, I get time to dial the stuff in a bit more. It's going to be similar to what I took on the GDMBR. The Trans America, I still have to read it. 4,228 miles from the west coast of America to the east coast. It goes through Oregon, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Colorado, Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, Kentucky and Virginia. I'm really looking forward to this one. It's a decent sized ride, mainly on roads, which is different to anything I've done. Uh, yeah, completely different. I've never done a, a long road tour, so I'm looking forward to that. Whilst I'm sat here waiting for this rain to go then, I may as well tell you how my preparation's going. I haven't got very far. All I've got so far are the maps, the paper maps of the route from the ACA, whose route I am going to follow. I like their route on the GDMBR. You can take an infinite amount of variations and diversions on the route, because I think the definition is you go from the west to the east or east to west. It doesn't matter which route you take. It's still a Trans Am, but I'm going to follow their route Unless I decide otherwise when I'm on my way. So here is my Kona Sutra. You've all seen this. This is the bike I've chosen for this ride. I did consider adapting my uh, Sonda because I do love that bike and it has the pinion drive, which is better for this kind of stuff. The thing is, it's not really suited to road riding. This is so much better for that. The tires are narrower. The riding position is better. It's just a road bike, really. It can be adapted to be a gravel bike, which you'll see later. But this is the bike I've chosen. It's a 2023 Kona Sutra. I put these mud guards on. Portland Design Works, which I really like. Nice, solid steel mud guards. It's got this front tubus rack, which is perfect for hanging these tail fin mini panniers. These are five litre ones. I've got my Swift zeitgeist bag on the front two stem bags from alpkit this top tube bag from alpkit this whatever you'd call it bag again alpkit and i've got my tail fin aero pack on the back with two 10 liter panniers so it has a 2 by 10 drivetrain i considered getting a 1 by 12 but i don't know i it's not good enough for the road as far as i can tell i mean i don't really know i'm just taking advice from people but it's shifting really well that I don't generally like front derailers but then I've only had crap ones so this is a really nice one it works well got the SKS Lambda pedals which I used on the GDMBR what else do you need to know Ergon SMC saddle really like that this lighter Fenix BC26R I use that on the GDMBR work perfectly and my Wahoo Element Bolt, which again has served me well, so I'm going to keep using it. This is a nice bike. I really like it. The tyres on there are Schwalbe Marathon, no, yeah, Schwalbe Marathon Mondial. They're supposed to be really puncture resistant um, and they should last the whole way. I mean, I'll be amazed if they do, but I'm told they do. I'm not going to run tubeless because the tyres are so so uh, puncture resistant, so I'm just not gonna bother. That may be a bad idea, I don't know. I'll find out, I better get this uh, gear out to show you before it starts raining again, because I know it's going to. Okay, okay, let's start. Maybe with the rear bag, the top bag. I'm probably gonna end up moving stuff around. Got my closed cell phone pad that goes into my sleeping pad. Also can be used as a seating pad. Thermarest X Lite sleeping pad. This is the long, wide version because it's so much more comfortable than the Uber Lite one, which I used on the GDMBR. Z Pax duplex tent with the poles and stakes, everything in there. That's it for there. Clothing and mainly things like that in there. My puffy jacket, Haglofts LIM. This is my Enlightened Equipment Revelation 20 degree quilt, Exped air pillow, a 
buff which i use as a pillowcase but also it'll be good to protect my neck in the sun and now actually it's nice and warm that's that for that bag for the other pannier we have leg warmers take a thin pair of shorts just for when i'm washing my riding clothes pack towel spare t-shirt nice and bright i have got to consider what i'm going to wear for riding on this trip because it's mainly road i need bright stuff maybe not yellow though it attracts bugs this my tried and trusty mountain equipment fleece very very thin but uh yeah just takes the edge off i do like this thing i've used that for the whole of the appalachian trail and the gdmbr spare pair of socks these are merino wool thin pair of gloves i don't ever wear gloves really but it's nice to have some just in case outdoor research helium rain pants these are great outdoor research helium rain jacket packs super small and that's that that's that one done this little bag is going to have easily accessible spares i have a repair kit but this is just things i need to grab quick gerber multi-tool really cool i like the pliers a bit heavy but you know i can afford the weight i'm running tubes um and I've got this Jubilito lightweight replacement tube. I'm gonna get another one as well, so I've got two. They just take up very little space and they're nice and strong. Tire levers, two of them. Crank Brothers M20 multi-tool. I like this because it has a chain breaker on there, which I need, because now I have a chain on this. I'm not a belt. This is a nice tool. I'll have this Dyneema pouch. that I'll have my passport money and cards. Auto lock, Kevlar reinforced bike lock. I don't really like this either, but it's compact and small. My first one broke after next to no use. They did send me another one, so yeah, fair enough. But I don't know, expensive, probably not worth it. Puncture repair kit for the normal tubes and a pump. Uh, I did buy one with a pressure gauge built in, but it's pointless. So this is a good pump. Race Rocket MT. I mean, it really is a high volume pump. So probably not that good for this. I might need to change the pump. In this stem bag, that's where my GoPro is going to live. And my click stand, which is in use at the moment. So they just slot in there. I can grab it out, film, all that lovely stuff. The other stem bag, my juice, the juice number two, trowel, some toilet paper, toothbrush, toothpaste, prescription sunglasses, Deet, sunblock, that's that. Let's go to the front panniers. In this one, pretty much all I'm gonna keep in there is my bear bag filled with food and my bear line. So that's just dedicated to food. There's quite a lot of towns on this route, as far as I can tell. So I'm probably not gonna need to carry that much in one go but that's the whole of that front pannier the other one will have my firebox nano stove which is can be used as a twig stove or as a gas stove my soya water filter and my knock bag very good my trusty spork which has been with me for many miles titanium pot inside of which is couple of lighters this is the gas adapter for the um, firebox and a gas canister one of the small ones I'm not certain about the firebox I do like it but uh, it's a little fiddly I don't know whether it's gonna get on my nerves when I'm on the route every time I want to stop for a coffee or something although I don't drink coffee really anymore I've given it up I'm on herbal tea sadly but anyway i uh, digress yeah i might just get another pocket rocket something like that that might be the way to go and that's that for that pannier i mean strangely i've got lot i've got lots of room i think i could bring more stuff and maybe i will but give me some advice if you've got any ideas or something that i've missed you think i really should have i would appreciate any tips advice the front bag now so i've got my mini osprey backpack which is 
nice and compact and useful if you need to carry extra water or you know you go into town or wherever you need to buy food you want to take the bike this is i'll open it electronic equipment in a dry bag so my head torch which is a nightcore nu25 uh flex tail pump this is really good for pumping up the uh, sleeping pad i did have the one with the light the bigger one and the only reason i changed it is because it keeps going off it's like um the buttons aren't great they're not protected so you're riding along and then the pump's going off wall charger this is a uh, high power can't remember what it puts out but a lot a lot of power so you can charge power banks quickly and headphones i hardly use them on the gdmbr i probably won't on this as well but you never know this is my spares and repair kit it's got lots of things in there it's quite similar to the gdmbr one if you saw that video but it will be adjusted slightly because you know it's a different bike so there's things like um repair patches for sleeping pads there's a repair kit for the tubolito um more tools formula allen key it, all sorts of things probably maybe do another video on that but it is similar to the one i took on the gdmbr if you want to look at that video my drone which is a dji mini 3 pro and the controller for it i got the proper one that doesn't need your phone for a screen my um batteries spare batteries for the gopro for the drone it's got the chargers cables spare propellers uh, a little light thing all sorts of stuff it's all filming stuff really so you know unique to that we have my garmin in reach messenger so people can track me as i'm on my way and in the other pocket first aid kit it's got ibuprofen paracetamol um probably gonna have all my blood pressure tablets i've had to go on tablets i didn't want to but I had to see the doctor so i'm gonna be carrying loads of tablets with me um that's why i stopped coffee but i don't know whether that was the cause the doctor just says it's genetics so what can you do thanks mum one job i believe that is it so that's everything i don't know whether that's lightweight i'd say it's minimal for me i'm sure people do it with less I see people on these road tours with huge panniers loaded with stuff and uh, I don't want that. I don't really focus on weight, I've said it before, I focus on efficiency. I just like having the bare minimum and for me this is the bare minimum. Everyone's different. So that's that. That is everything. It amazes me really and I have got extra room so yeah if you can think of anything else that I need or I've forgotten there will be something. Let me know. So I have a review channel, some of you may know, it'll be linked below, where I view some of the equipment on here. If you're interested, have a look at that. Also, I'm filming this video now because I'm going to be taking the mud guards off and changing the tyres. I have some uh, gravel tyres. It's the beauty of this bike, it can function as a road bike or a gravel bike. So I'm converting it, I'm putting it into gravel bike mode. So wider tyres, gravel tyres, no mud guards. Most of the bags will come off. I'll probably keep the tail fin on because I'm off into Europe in a couple of weeks in my van on the hunt for some nice cycle routes. Not just that, but that'll be a large part of it. Plan to park up somewhere, find a nice route and get out and explore on the bike. It's good training for the Trans Am and it's a nice thing to do. So I'm going to miss all of this glorious British weather and vanish into Europe for a little while. I say vanish, it's all going to be on YouTube. Here comes the rain, thought so. Timing's impeccable. So if you're interested in seeing what I'm getting up to, it'll all be on YouTube. Subscribe, it's free. Some people think it has a cost, which I don't blame them because the word subscribe implies a cost. Anyway, it's free. So depending on whether the tires come in time, you might see this bike in gravel mode, ready to go into Europe. If not, then you'll see it when I start that journey anyway. It all depends if the tyres come in time to get this video out. I guess you're going to find out now. Okay, here we are. So the aim here is just to make this bike as simple as possible for when I go away into Europe. I'm probably going to be using this bag. I'm going to take the front rack off, take the mud guards off, change the tyres. I want to keep it simple. 
it's going to be chucked in and out of the van and things are going to get bent and they're going to get in the way and also it's going to live on the outside of the van so i don't want people just nicking stuff off it so you understand you get the picture so let's start won't be using these Right, there's that. Now for the rear. Not too bad. I'm likely gonna regret. That's my tires. That was good. My tyres, they just turned up. Perfect timing. So I've gone for these. WTB Riddlers, 45 mil. Yeah, nice grip on them. But they're the stronger ones, the SG2. They're tubeless compatible, but I'm going to run tubes. That tubes, that might be a bad idea. I'm not sure yet. That's nice. No way. Nothing's ever that easy. These feel nice and thick. No idea if this is the best way of doing this. I really am learning as I go along. My next thing will be learning how to do a tubeless setup myself. Well, that bit was easy. 55 PSI max. That's it. God, that couldn't have been easier. Seriously. 50 PSI, I'll probably lower that, but... Happy. Right, now to do the other one. Man, so easy. Epic. Oh, I better put them on. They look good. All right. Talk to 11 Newton meters. Click. There you are. Gravel bike mode. These tires look really nice. There's still tons of room. You could get much wider tires in there, but I think 45s are a good balance. All done. Ready for my European trip, which is probably the next time you're going to see this bike. Hopefully in the Pyrenees or riding around Normandy, I'm not sure yet. Still haven't got a plan. And I don't need a plan. I'm going to go out now and give it a test before it rains again, which of course it will. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.